Today, I want to share with you something that was life-changing for me. The fact that we are a spirit, soul, and body. I know that you probably heard that already, and you probably think you understand it, and I did too, but there, I came to a place of revelation that really helped me to understand and stand strong in the area of doing signs, wonders, and miracles because I had a, a revelation about it. Now basically, it's, it's like this. You are a spirit. Now, I don't think you can probably see that with a camera, so let me make it a little bit better. Okay. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body. Okay. You're a spirit. You're a spirit being, not a human being. What makes you a human being is that you have a thought that you live in a body. You are a spirit being who has a soul who lives in a body. Now, that alone might not be life changing to you, but let's dig a little bit deeper. Everything that you need in this life, all of God's power, presence, revelation, and knowledge is already in you. And when I say in you, you is the spirit man because you see when people who do not have Jesus who are not born again are spiritually dead they do not have they have a spirit but their spirit is dead there is no there's no there's no life in this this is this is it's just alive it has no life in it it's like uh, having a something that is brain dead and it's just being kept alive with with tools and machines. Well, before you're born again, you have a spirit, I mean, you have a body and a soul, a soul and a body. And everything that happens to you is uh, brought into your body. You make decisions by what happens to your body and what happens to your soul. All your decision making comes from the outside and everything that happens affects you, body and soul. So everything, so your body and your soul is affected and changed by the things coming into it from the outside, from everything coming into it. Now, it's a whole different story when you're born again. When you're born again, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body, okay? Now, when you're born again, your spirit is made alive again. And when your spirit is made alive, it says that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. In other words, nothing can get into your spirit to contaminate it. You're sealed in the Holy Spirit. You're you're sealed with God's presence, God's power. Uh, I don't so much mean that nothing can get into contaminated in the sense of in the spirit realm. What I'm saying is you don't lose your salvation. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now let me explain a little bit better. We'll go back to that. But let me explain first that uh, the real you is a spirit. And when we say you, we don't mean your body. We don't mean your soul. As Christians, we mean your spirit. You are a spirit. Okay? Now, in Hebrews 12, 9, it says that God is the father of spirits. Okay? And in Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe it is 6, 16, it says, He who is born of the spirit is one spirit with the Lord. It says that in John, let um, I and you, Father, and you in me, Father, and them in me, and them in us, so that we are all one, that they may all be one in me as I am in you. In other words, we become one with God. We become one with Jesus. That's what the Word of God says. And in Ephesians 1, three, it says, I am sealed in the Holy Spirit. In Colossians 1.22, it says, I am holy, unblameable, and above reproach. You are holy, unblameable, and above reproach. Not the soul and the body, but the spirit. The spirit is holy and above reproach. 
And this is so awesome. If you can get a hold of this, this is life-changing information. I just love this. This is part of what my new book coming out, uh, Punching Holes in Darkness, because once you really get a revelation of all this and some of the other things that I'm going to be sharing and teaching, revelations, guys, share it with me, that has changed my life. Uh, you will be changed. So all this is going to be in my new book, Punching Holes in Darkness. It's going to explain further, and it's going to go deeper. So let me take you a little bit deeper now. 1 John 4, 15 says, His life abides in me. So the key thing here is you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And like I said before, when you are not saved, the things that makes you you is things coming in from the outside affect you. What you see, hear, taste, feel, and smell. What you experience, what other people experience, what they tell you. Those are things that form your personality and form who you are. They affect you. But when you get born again, your spirit inside of you comes alive again. And now your spirit, and this is a trick, your spirit is sealed in the Holy Spirit, is one with God. And now your spirit is in control. Instead of your body or your soul being in control, your spirit is now in control. And that makes a major difference. When you're not saved, your body or your spirit is in control. Your body or your, sorry, your body or your soul is in, in, in control. Influenced by outside things coming in, uh, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, uh, world conditions, news. Your aunt died of this. Your uncle was poor because of that and this and so on. All these Things that you see, hear, feel, touch, taste, experience, all your history, all this causes you to be who you are. But when you're born again, your spirit comes alive. And your spirit man has to take control, has to be the boss. Because what's going to happen is you want your spirit man to be the center of who you, the spirit man is who you are. And you want your spirit man to control and go to the outside. Okay? Now... Let's get back to here because that's a whole another thing I'm going to go over in a minute. I want to convince you that you are a spirit. So, uh, let's see. Everything that you need for life and godliness is in your spirit. Okay, the Word of God says that. It says, um, it says I am part you're partakers of his divine nature. First uh, Peter 1.4 1 John 2, 20 and 27 says I have that you have anointing and you know all things because you are one spirit with God. You are connected with God. And the word of God says that I'm not making that up. Okay, I am partakers. You are partakers of his divine nature. 1 Peter 1, 4. Uh, 1 John 2, 20 and 27. I have anointing and know all things. 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so am I in this world. Because we're one. We're one spirit with Jesus. I, we have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. We have the same measure of faith that Jesus had. Here is the key. 1 Peter, I'm going to write this down so you remember this. 1 Peter 1.3. You can see that, I'm not sure. 1 Peter 1.3 says, I have all things for life and godliness. God has given us all things for life and godliness. Where has he given it to us? In our spirit, because we are first a spirit. And what we're going to learn to do is in our spirit, there are gateways or doors. And what we're going to learn to do is open those doors with, and cause the power, the peace, the presence, the joy, the kingdom, all that of God to come out of our spirit into our soul, go through our soul doorways or gateways, and come out of our, and manifest in our body. That's what happens when we lay hands on the sick. The spirit being that we are on the inside is releasing God's presence and power from our spirit being into our soul and into our physical body so that when we touch someone, lay hands on them, the power of God comes through us and is in them and they are healed. Okay, and that's the power of God. And that's what we want. We want this spirit being to be number one. And we want everything to flow from our spirit man 
instead of coming in from the outside like when we were dead. Okay, let me go on and share some more scriptures with you. We also have <clears throat> resurrection power to raise the dead in us. We are heir of the world. We have power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. And that doesn't mean we can stand here and lift weights and, you know, we're stronger than the devil. No, it's our spirit man. Our spirit man has power, has authority over the devil when we're born again. Life and death is in the power of our tongue because words are spirit. And in my next chart here, excuse me, we'll find that out. We are created for good works. And those who believe in Jesus will do the same works as he and greater works. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Because in we are a spirit being. A spirit being. If you can get that into your head that we are, we are a spirit who have a soul and live in a body. And the fact that we live in a physical body is what gives us authority on the earth. Because God said he gave all authority and dominion. He gave it to man. Put all things under our feet, physical man's feet, not the spirit realm, but physical man's feet. So our physical body is what gives our spiritual body authority and dominion on the earth. Once our once we're dead, our spirit leaves our body and goes to heaven, then we no longer have any life in us. We no longer have any authority on this earth as a spirit because our body is what gives us the authority and dominion. <clears throat> And let's see. And that is basically all that I want to share with you <clears throat> on that point. What I'm going to do next uh, in the next video is I'm going to share with you about how each body, spirit, and soul that we have, that there are gateways or doorways that in our lifetime have been open and ha have allowed the enemy to come into it. Now if you were ever involved in the occult witchcraft or uh, uh, the spirit realm on the demonic side, then you're going to have to um, take authority and control of your spirit realm. But most people don't have to do that. Most people just have to take authority of all the gateways that are in their body and their soul. And what we're going to do is we're going to place G. I'm going to go over what the gateways are to the spirit realm in our spirit as a spirit being. And the gateways to our body and our, our soul. Because what happens is, as we go through life, certain things happen to us that cause an entryway to either get blocked or either to get filled. It allows uh, demons to um, attach themselves to us or uh, whatever you want to call it, our body or our soul. And those are the areas that we have to clean up because that's what causes us to have certain mindsets and certain behaviors and attract certain kinds of people to us. If you find that you're always, uh, uh, you, you married and then you divorce and then you married and you divorce and married and divorce, it's most likely because you have in your uh, soul, you have uh, a spirit that has attached itself to you through a relationship that you had. And so it continues to cause you to be attracted to that same kind of person or that same kind of situation over and over again. And what you have to do is you have to get rid of that spirit that has access to your soul or through your body. Um, and those are uh, ways that uh, we are affected. The gateways are how we're affected. So I'm going to go over some of the gateways in the next uh, video clip. I'll uh, probably put some of them together and help you to understand those gateways and how we can clean them up so that we can walk in God's supernatural presence and power. Not that we can't walk in his supernatural presence and power right now, but you're going to find that you have all kinds of excuses, all kinds of mindsets, all kinds of thinking that stops you and prevents you from walking in the manifest supernatural presence and power of God. And what I'm going to do is go over some of those gateways and then show you how to clean them up, and this is a continuous basis, how to clean them up so that you can walk in God's supernatural presence and power because you'll have the mind of Christ. And so um, that's it for this video.